These cards are worth millions of dollars. But what if you did this? What are they worth then? In 2023, collectors spent over $12 billion buying pieces of cardboard. There's a bigger reason why people are willing to buy these things. And it's not just about profit or showing off on social media. Trading cards are worth so much more. And I wanted to look at a few collectors to come to a conclusion on what trading cards are actually worth. Hello, and here we go. Let's start at the top with Post Malone. I'm not going to break down his music, his dancing, or his YouTube career. To me, the most compelling part is that Post Malone spends an ungodly amount of money buying Magic the Gathering cards. Most irresponsible use of my money I've ever experienced. I bought a $2 million Magic the Gathering card. Wow. And I gotta say, I don't know a single thing about Magic, but hearing Post talk about the game is pretty interesting. I'm gonna play Lathro Bailey Elves, and um... I'm gonna try and make some L's. I'm gonna try and uh, do some cool kind of stuff. <laughs> and uh... He's a collector, and these aren't just pieces of cardboard. They're pieces of cardboard that tell stories, like this. The Holy Grail of Magic the Gathering, the One Ring. An exclusive, one-of-a-kind collaborative card between the Lord of the Rings franchise and Magic the Gathering. Its fate is unknown. The ring will be found when it wants to be found. Eventually, though, some random guy got lucky and pulled the card for himself, and what do you know? A couple weeks later, he's selling that card for $2 million to none other than Post Malone. So how did that happen? Luck. Some celebrities give trading cards a bad rep, though like Blake Martinez. This guy walked away from the NFL to scam people over Pokemon cards, allegedly. But how and why does a pro football player actually come to this? First off, I wanna lead off, uh, speaking about the elephant in the room, I know the Reddit post came out today. I understand the optics. Uh, look directly on the camera with you guys. Blake played seven seasons in the NFL and earned over $28 million. By the age of 28, his body had taken a beating, so he decided to take his money and retire. Honestly, I can't blame him either. His little Pokemon side hustle had become a legitimate business. Giants linebacker, former Packer, Stanford Cardinal guy, but your kids might know him as the founder of Blake's Breaks. I started back when I was uh, six years old, and so I went to my mom. I was like, hey, like, where's my Pokemon cards at? I think I got a million dollars in that binder. Started watching people do uh, box breaks. It's where they open up a vintage box, sell pack by pack. Saw them doing it, and I was like, I think I could do this myself. I think it's way more fun. At the end of this week, we'll break six million in revenue as a, as a company, um, and we're just moving Full head of steam forward since then. Blake could become an example of the opportunity and the optimism around trading cards. Then, reality set in. As it turns out, behind the scenes, it wasn't all Pikachus and Jigglypuff. This is a Snee, a, a breaker of Blake's. So, for context here, we got a, we got a pick four energies, a super duper bonus game. Uh, and that's why you're paying extra money for your packs. You have a watch the pack switch because they know the energy in the packs. There we go. Well, let's just stick another pack on top of that. Pull that one back and she gone. Oh, we're going to go through the pack here. Swap. Swap. Put the same pack work. Oh, same pack artwork over top of the pack. If anyone can please find an excuse for why this was not scamming, it's okay. Well, we're going to get one from Blake. And at first, Blake did respond. It seemed like he was going to try and work on making things right. I understand the optics. But ultimately, he got banned off whatnot and NFL Network reported that the 29-year-old is attempting an NFL comeback and even worked out for the winless Panthers on Wednesday. Yeah, you can't script that kind of stupid unless you're Logan Paul. Because trading cards have driven Logan insane. On one hand, Logan was flat out one of the first A-list YouTubers and social media personalities to really put an emphasis on the storytelling and content side of trading cards. And that's because he's Logan Paul. He's all about putting time, money, and resources into capturing and creating spectacles. If trading cards are a treasure, Logan is a dragon, trying to hoard up as much value as he can for his own personal gain. And while that can lead to such amazing content and serve as inspiration for other collectors, Logan's game is a dangerous one to play. Because while he's amassed millions of views with a single Pokemon card that set a Guinness World Record, he also had to spend over $5 million to make that happen. Oh my god. So to him, trading cards are risk versus reward. 
just like for Jeff Wilson, AKA the sports card investor. Jeff is a character, and I mean that in an earnest way. He's upfront about his channel being focused on the investment side of the trading card hobby. And with his team of fellow card nerds at his side, combined with his card data tool called Market Movers, he's creating, I, hold on, I realize that this sounds like an ad, I promise you it's not, I'm not getting paid. Anyway, what was I saying? Sports card investor is making content that's helping the average collector, the average investor in a way that's sustainable and makes sense for them. The unique thing about sports card investor is that it's not just one person. It's not just Jeff, it's a whole team, an entire community. And through their content, we not only get to learn about the meta game within trading cards, we also get to engage with different personalities, actual people. And recently, these guys announced they're building their very own card shop to further prove that to some people, trading cards can not only be a passion, but they can be legitimate businesses that seek to profit without stepping on toes. And me, you know, I'm somewhere in the middle of all of it. I collect players I like to watch, cards with unique stories, and some cards that I just think might be worth a little more money down the road. There's just a little bit of everything in it for me and for everyone in this space. Because the cool thing about trading cards and collectibles in general is that all of this stuff will always be worth something to someone.